Hi, this is Bryce with eLearning Brothers. Today I'm going to walk you through an awesome new feature in Captivate 9. This feature is states within objects. Now, when somebody first hears the word states, I think the natural tendency is to think of button states, such as hover, selected, uh, down state, things like that. So you might be thinking to yourself, so what's the, what's the big deal? Captivate 8 also had states, button states. Well, as we can see, we can modify the states a little bit differently here in Captivate 9, where it has this whole new state functionality. Here, I can also add in completely new customized states. So if I wanted to say, you know what, I want a, a visited state, I could enter that in and make a visited state. Let's not do that because we already have a selected state here. So this is pretty similar to uh, the Captivate 8 way you do button states. Similar, but not exactly, but, but pretty similar. Uh, there are uh, quite a few functionality differences. However, we can go through that in another another tutorial. What I think uh, I want to talk about even more is the utility that these object states can really have. So let's take, for example, this click and reveal interaction. I have one text box here that has multiple states. So I started out, if you can see the thumbnail up here, all you can really see is that welcome text right in the background because all these other objects are part of the, uh, the welcome text state. So if I go to state view and I have that selected, I can now see here I added in a background image, a text box, and that was my normal state. Going on, I also have content one, content two, content three, and content four state views. So I, I added in different graphic elements, uh, text boxes, things like that. Now the awesome thing about this is the way we can um, view and, and hide other states. So let's look at a previously uh, built um, click and reveal interaction that wasn't built in Captivate 9. The previous way we would have to do it is first make a bunch of um, objects on the timeline. Let's take, take, take a look at the timeline here on the other one. There are only five objects here on the timeline. Here we have a bunch of different content groups. Within those content groups are other objects. So it can kind of be a little confusing just looking at the timeline alone. However, take a look at this. If we go into the advanced actions of just one button, there's a, a, an array of pretty complex um, actions that you have to take to make sure that you have a simple click and reveal interaction happen. Okay, So a bunch of hide shows, apply effects, things like that. Check out this. So if I go to the advanced action of one of these buttons, I have that exact same utility that was done in here in this previous one done in two actions. So, so much easier for, especially for somebody starting out with Captivate, but also for the advanced user, so many less clicks, so many less things to think about. All you need to worry about is change state of, so this is how I did it, change state of content, which was my object, and then I want to change it to content one, state content one, so that simple. Uh, I want to close. I don't want to save that, which is fine. And uh, let's just preview this, see how it looks. So once we preview it, now we can see that these button states do change to the hover state that I selected. And now when I click on it, it also changes the button to the selected state, how I have in the advanced action. And the content one state will then appear as well. So super easy to use in your advanced actions and uh, being able to just to minimalize a lot of your coding and a lot of your actions in, in those advanced actions. Well, all right, I hope you uh, enjoyed the tutorial. Thanks for listening and have a nice day.